This is an experiment testing a vortex-cooled rocket engine. The chamber is very small and designed as a torch igniter for a larger rocket engine. If you're running a rocket engine, you need to keep the combustion chamber wall cool. If it gets too hot, the materials will fail and it will probably explode. What we're testing here is vortex cooling. Oxygen gas is injected into the chamber at a tangent such that it swirls around the perimeter of the chamber. This creates a boundary layer of cool, pure oxygen between the hot combusting core and the chamber wall. Oxidizer is injected at the nozzle end, just before the nozzle starts to converge. If this is your rocket engine, this being the chamber, this being the throat, and the exhaust going that way, then with vortex cooling, gaseous oxygen is injected tangentially through ports like these. This means that the oxygen will swirl around the periphery of the chamber, and it actually swirls backwards towards the injector plate before swirling in on itself, mixing with the fuel, combusting, expanding, and being ejected from the nozzle. That swirling vortex of oxygen around the periphery of the chamber is what protects the chamber wall material from that hot combusting core in the center. Enough of the theory, here's the setup. We have servo-operated valves, pressure and temperature sensors, and a high-voltage spark generator for ignition, all mounted on a sliding set of rails that transfer the thrust through a load cell. Timings for valves and the sparker are sequenced with a microcontroller. The first tests ran on propane and compressed air to get an estimation of valve and sparker timings to reliably ignite the chamber. Then we were ready for pure oxygen. The spark igniter activates before the valves open, so that the propellants are ignited as quickly as possible. If oxidizer and fuel build up in the chamber, then ignite, you can get what's called a hard start, which is basically an explosion, which breaks things. The chamber was designed to be modular, so we swapped out the shattered nozzle. These first tests with a long chamber show that the characteristic length of the chamber is too long and thin to sustain a strong swirling vortex. Modularity helped again here, allowing a shorter chamber to be swapped in. This worked much better, easily sustaining vortex combustion. In this test, you can see ignition and a slight vortex, then the combustion shifts to outside of the chamber. The flame looks spectacular, but it's not producing any thrust and is no more than a blowtorch at this point. This chamber was 3D printed in resin on a Formlabs Form 3. As we test, the nozzle throat slowly erodes due to the high temperature. If we were to 3D print this on a normal FDM printer in thermoplastic, the parts would melt and become unusable as soon as they became warm or hot. This shows the difference between a resin print and a thermoplastic print on a hot plate. The resin part keeps its shape, but the plastic part melts. Under a blowtorch, the resin part ablates, which means it burns away a surface layer, but remains mostly intact. The printed thermoplastic part melts, losing its form. Printing this small combustion chamber in resin allows for short test firings, while avoiding the very high cost of metal 3D printed parts. As you test for longer, the nozzle throat slowly erodes, but you get a good few seconds of testing before it does. As with any material, when it gets very cold, it becomes brittle. When flowing liquid propane through the nozzle, it caused this brittleness, so on a hard start, it shattered the nozzle. Again. A new nozzle later, and we got the best firing yet. A clear supersonic Mac Diamond pattern is present in the exhaust. The inner chamber wall has no heat damage because of that shield of swirling oxygen. Only the nozzle throat erodes because of the extremely high temperature it's under. In a metal version of this igniter, just the throat would require some regenerative cooling channels to keep it from melting. The transparency of these parts is what makes it a brilliant demonstrator, because you can see the combustion taking place inside the chamber. All of these tests are made possible by the fact that the Form 3 is printing in resin, so it's able to withstand the higher temperatures, and also you can create really high fidelity orifices within the injector. If you want to learn more about cool projects like this and design for metal 3D printing, check out our work at Additive Experimental in the links below. Thanks for watching.